Want to know an amazing, cost-effective way that you can deploy your Unify controller in the cloud? Keep watching. So by now, it's no secret that I really love Unify for their low-cost, effective way to bring software-defined networking to the enterprise and Soho scenario. Like me, myself, I have Unify stuff in my house, but my controller is running in the cloud. So why? Why the cloud? Why not just get the controller, the cloud key and call it a day and be done and have it you just plug it in and it's working, right? Well, there's a few reasons why I like having my controller in the cloud. Let me show you real quick. So you have your house or your business, and it is just going to be illustrated by this very crude house that I'm drawing here. Let's say you've got a Unify infrastructure in your house. Maybe you've got a switch on the first floor, a switch on the second floor. Maybe you've got some APs mounted uh, in your first and second floor. But then, of course, you have the USG firewall. Now, where does your controller live in this case? Well, if you've got the cloud key, you're plugging it in somewhere in your house. And if you're interacting in your house or out there in the wild, maybe it's connected to the internet and you're uh, out to dinner with some friends and you want to show them how cool your Unify controller is, you'll pull up the app and it'll travel back in through your firewall and make its way to the, the cloud key. And boom, there you go. You've got access to your infrastructure. You can make changes from here. Or maybe you're in the house and you're connecting directly to the cloud key because you're on the LAN. Uh, what are the limitations of doing this? Well, first of all, if you lose power or lose internet right there, man, well, out here in the wild, now you can't get into your house. Uh, you can't access your cloud key. Uh, secondly, is if you're making configuration changes, maybe you change a VLAN or something from 20 to accidentally you type 21, uh, all of a sudden your LAN is broken. So your controller can't communicate to your firewall in this case, uh, and chances are you won't be able to correct the issue without getting into either the command line or you're going to just factory default it. Third, what if you're lucky enough to have a beach house and you've got Unify stuff there uh, and you want it all to communicate back? You're going to have to do some trickeration uh, to make it work here. You may even have to use dynamic DNS because your IP is changing at your house. Now, what is the enterprise scenario here? The enterprise is instead of a house, you've got an HQ, uh, and this is maybe branch one. So your devices are communicating back uh, to each other back to this controller. This is where uh, having a dedicated server up and running in a public cloud like Azure or AWS, this is where this is going to benefit you. Because first of all, these sites can communicate over the public internet in a secure manner back to the controller that's always going to be resilient and available and you can set it up to have a static IP. And now if we lose power or we lose electricity, uh, this controller will notice that. It's going to say, hey, the stuff hasn't checked in for a while, and it's going to shoot you an email. Boop, right there. Fancy little email. Let's put an E on it so we know it's email. Um, and let you know, like, hey, this device hasn't checked in in the last 30 seconds. We think something's going on with that device. Or if you are in your house and you're tinkering with the LAN and you make the wrong VLAN, this connection from the firewall to the controller is still going to be good because the VLAN only impacts things on the inside of the network. It doesn't impact the outside of the network. So you can still go to the controller, issue a new device configuration or a reset that VLAN, and it'll report back to the firewall and fix all those devices for you. All right, that's the benefits of deploying in the cloud. Now let me show you how to deploy in Azure. All right, I am logged into Azure. And if you're new to Azure, don't worry. We're going to show you what you need to get a unified controller up and running. But I do want to encourage you to check out CBT Nuggets because CBT Nuggets is where you can go to get amazing Azure training. Outside of the training that I've done on Azure, you can check out Network Chuck. You know, the Network Chuck. You do subscribe to his YouTube channel, right? Uh, he's doing training on the AZ-103 right now. Now, my training has been more for the AZ-101 and the AZ-203 which is a little bit more devoted towards development and DevOps. But anyways, go check out cbtnuggets.com, give the one-week free trial a run, and check out the, other, the amazing Azure content that's there. All right, anyways, back to what we were doing. We are deploying an Azure virtual machine so that it can run an Ubuntu instance, which is going to run our Unify controller. I'm just going to click on virtual machines and then add, and it's going to bring us in here to get started. 
All right, I'm going to put this in my UBNT resource group. If you don't have a resource group, you'll just click the Create New button right here, and it's going to logically group all of the pieces together that make this virtual machine run. Let's go ahead and give it a name, something like Unify Controller, something simple like that. And I'm going to put this in the East US. Now, I want to run Ubuntu Server 18.04, but I don't want it to be the D2S V3. That's a big virtual machine just to run the controller from my house. So I'm gonna choose the B1S instance. You can see it costs a whopping $7.74 a month in the East US region. Uh, if you prepay up to three years, you can reduce this down by more than half. So you, you could be running a very affordable controller. Now scroll down a little bit, we're gonna create a username and password by clicking on the password button and then typing in our info. And at this point, I am good enough to deploy this virtual machine, but I am gonna clean up a couple things real quick. I'm gonna to go to allow selected ports and make sure I allow SSH in so that we can configure this device. I'm gonna leave my disks the way they are. I'm okay with a 30 gig disk, but if you want to ratchet that up, you can do that. That does come at an additional cost. And networking, just so you know, this is where we are going to be assigning a public IP. By default, we are gonna get a public IP for our controller. All right, I'm gonna choose review and create. And validation is passed. I'm going to click create. And in a couple minutes, we'll come back and we'll have our VM up and running. That only took a couple minutes. I now have a virtual machine up and running. If I go back to virtual machines here, there it is. Unify controller. I see it's running and it's in the East US. Let's go ahead and give it a click. And what I'm going to do first, before we even get into the machine itself, is I'm going to fix the firewall. See, there's firewalls in a couple places. First of all, Azure has a firewall that's protecting this device, and then the machine itself has a firewall. So to open up the Azure firewall ports, I'm going to click on networking, and we're going to be adding inbound port rules. So I'll add an inbound port rule. This firewall rule is applied to the actual device NIC. Uh, so the destination of any, that would only be if this device had multiple IPs, and you could specify one there. I'm going to allow port 8080 in, because that's what adoption happens on. We'll click Add, because by default, 8080 is what's selected. So it's going to create the security rule. There we go, security rule is created. Let's also do this for 8443. We'll do 8443. I'll change the name down here to 8443. Click Add. And there we go, 8443 has been successfully created there. All right, let's go back to my overview and we'll get connected to this device. Right here, you'll see this connect button here. We'll give that a click. And the very last one, log in using VM local account. I'll copy that to the clipboard. This little button right here is to launch a shell which we can use to log into this device from within Azure. So I'll just give ourselves a little bit more space. Now, the first time you launch this, you're gonna to wanna to create an account and you may also have to switch this to Bash from PowerShell. All right, Bash is set. I'll paste this in, press Enter. We'll say yes to accept the host key. We'll type in our password. Whoop, oh, incorrect password. There we go, we are now signed in. All right, now here's the thing. The Ubuntu install documentation for 18.04 on Unify's website, it doesn't really work. In fact, it's kind of hitting a moving target when you're talking with Ubuntu. But this guy here, I'll put a link to this post, he says that he's got the, the ticket to make sure this is working. So what we're going to do is we're going to do step one, copy the link. Well, I'm going to scroll down to the latest version. That's 5.10, and we are working with Ubuntu 18.04. So I'm going to right-click. And I'm going to choose Copy Link Location. I'll bring up Notepad real quick. And I'm just going to paste this in. There we go. So we're going to put that as a little placeholder for right now. Now, step two. What was step two? It says SSH into your machine with root privileges. Well, I've got that. All right. Let's go ahead and copy this and make sure we've got all of the steps going. I will type sudo just to be safe. And I will paste this info in. Press enter. Oh, I'm going to give this a pseudo right here too. All right, we are good to go there. Step three, wget, we'll do pseudo wget, and then our URL that we had just copied. So let's do pseudo wget. We'll copy and paste this. Press enter. All right, there is the script. Let's make sure the script is executable. We'll do sudo again. 
paste this info in. Let's run the script. There we go. The one prompt that I've had so far, do you want to keep the script on your system after completion? Sure, why not? It is now going through the MongoDB installation. MongoDB doesn't come with Ubuntu 18.04 by default, but it is what is required by the back end of Unify. Whenever Unify is collecting all of this data on you know, usage statistics and configuration details, it stores it all in a MongoDB database on the back end. Also, Java. Java 8 is required. Open JDK 8. So that's what's being installed after MongoDB. And after the dependencies are installed, we are now installing Unify. Woohoo! Coming down the home stretch. Do you want to add the script to the source file list? Sure, I'll say yes to that. That sounds like a good thing to do. And the last thing we see here is that Unify is active and running. Your controller address is this. What happens if I give that a click? Hmm, oh, that's a good sign. Uh, we are being posed a security risk because we haven't assigned an SSL certificate. Guess what you want to wipe for? In the very next video that's coming out, we're going to show you how to assign an SSL certificate for free to this controller. In the meantime, I'm going to click accept the risk and continue. And there is a Unify wizard setup. How beautiful is that? United States, Chicago, enable backup. Looks good. We'll say next. Uh, there's no devices as of yet. I'm okay with that. We'll click next. Uh, configure Wi-Fi. We'll just call this my Wi-Fi and give it a fake name, something stupid like that. We'll say next. And we are going to go ahead and give ourselves a username, a password, a... Oh, that was an email address. This one is a password. There we go. All right, I'm going to change the device authentication to also be my username and password instead of the one that they set for us. And I'll click, ne oh, it's not going to let me. There we go. We'll just add an extra key to it. There we go. Next. Don't worry about that. Finish. And I don't need to worry about enabling cloud access. I'll click skip. And next thing I know, I have a Unify controller up and running in Azure. Now I can use the... IP address and port 8080 to adopt my devices, come back here and adopt them and then manage and configure them that way. All right, y'all, in the next one, we are going to configure SSL for this thing so we don't get that nasty error when we get connected to it. In the meantime, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.